You know, let's bring the vagina models to Sunset Park and let's do it in Spanish and English. To speak of the body, the self, and the image of women is to speak of women's liberation. The Vagina Monologues premiered at Uprose on February 18, 2015 in Sunset Park, facilitating a powerful bilingual evening of expressive monologues. The Vagina Monologues explores the experiences of women and the importance of communities to share their stories through the lenses of their experiences and self-discovery. The arts play a major role in the impact of clear, concise messages of empowerment through exploration of womanhood. Y uno de nuestros pensamientos era que no hay suficiente educación sexual, principalmente para las latinas, y pensamos que era muy importante uh, par uh, participar en esta obra. Es que eh, estamos, en, estamos en un punto donde los papás no hablan con los hijos, no está esta cosa, los hijos ahora hablan más inglés que español. Entonces pensamos que era muy importante que haya esta comunicación. Muy importante quiere decir que de una u otra uh, manera estábamos conversando, estábamos hablando de un tema que para los hispanos es tabú. No hables de eso, está prohibido, eh, eh, como... Simplemente en la casa no se habla de sexo y es, es tiempo de que las latinas traigamos ese mensaje de que sí, tenemos que hablar de sexo, tenemos que hablar de nuestras vaginas y tenemos que hablar de la importancia que es la salud. At, at the también. thing as a whole, but I think that one of the big things about the vagina monologues is just starting at language and saying why do we use words that refer to female genitals as also derogatory words and why are so many of the words that we use to refer to female genitals derogatory in themselves? Why do we stigmatize women? Why do we tell women that their sexuality is bad? And all this has to do just with the way that we discuss. And I think that start on, on a student level, starting really somewhere as, as easy as saying, the next time you're going to call someone a pussy, don't, because actually the vagina is a very powerful part of the human body. The next time you're going to call someone a cunt, don't, because actually that goes back to a goddess of female sexuality, and that's where that word comes from. And so I think starting at the lingual level and just saying, let's take out of our, our culture these sort of basic stepping stones that we've used to, to keep women down for years and years and years um, is a really important step. Women aren't talking about their vaginas, you know what I mean? And so these problems still exist, you know? And it's like, we still need to be having this conversation. And I think that that's the, the focus of the conversation, that, that when sex isn't consensual, when men use women's bodies um, without their consent, it, 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 it uh, disempowers women. And I think there's a lot of power in the vagina, you know? And, and why, why is rape a systematic tactic of war? It's not because every man that rapes women in war is a psychopath. It's because when you disempower an entire group of women, in, a, in an entire region, you really, you really punish the future of that region. There aren't any real consequences to rape. There, and then you get told, then you get asked like, how much did you have to drink? What were you wearing? Like, why the fuck does that matter? I didn't consent to having sex. It comes down to educating, educating our youth. If we teach them at 10 years old, 12 years old, 11 years old, that to have sex, it has to be consensual, then we wouldn't be seeing this in college campuses. But that's not a conversation we have with our kids because that's not a conversation adults are willing to have. And until adults are willing to have it, we're not willing to teach it to our kids. Storytelling is very powerful, and um, just using art and artistic and creative ways to tell people our stories, our women's stories, our vagina stories, I think it's very empowering because it it's lets people see the problem in a different light. If you can't empower women, you can't empower the people, you can't empower a revolution. No revolution happens without women.